How's it going folks? Welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about how to change images to a specific spot PMS color. Now I did a similar video to this a few months ago and we were talking about how to do it for vector and text objects. This is going to be specifically for uh, something like a photo. So if I click on this one here. I have 10 different photos in a PDF file and I have converted these over into basically CMYK images. So now I want to take this and I want to convert it over into a specific PMS color. Let's say I'm going to take this later, drop it into uh, another f file in either Illustrator or Acrobat, and then we're going to send this off to be printed on an offset press. So it has to be set to a specific PMS um, for whatever reason. Let's just say we're not going to use it we're not going to do it as a CMYK process image. We're going to print it specifically in a uh, Pantone color. So there's two ways to do that. If I go into print production, I can use the edit object, click on the actual photo and click properties. And on the color tab here at the top, I can convert it either to uh, either an RGB file or CMYK. In this case, the dot gain 15% will convert it over to a uh, grayscale image. So if I click convert colors, you'll see in the background, it's converted that from a CMYK image over to a process black or grayscale. So that's fine and dandy if you just want to select one image, but what if you're doing a whole bunch? In this case, we're going to need to do 10 of these, right? So let me go back, not save that. If I go into print production and I go into pre-flight this time, you can go into the uh, uh, basically the default profile, one of the default profiles that comes with Acrobat Pro, and there's one here called Convert to Grayscale. And if I click Analyze and Fix, and I'll just call this Photos Grayscale, hit Save, it's going to go through and it's going to convert all 10 of these pages in the PDF file on over to a grayscale image for each. Give that just a second. And we're done. If I scroll through, you can see all of these now are set up as a grayscale image. So now I'm going to take this and I'm going to convert it over to a PMS color. So I go back to pre-flight and I've created a new one here called map grayscale images to spot color keeps tint percentage. Now this is going to be important because since these are photos, we don't want to convert the whole thing over to a solid color, right? Obviously, if you do that, you'll just end up with a, you know, a magenta or cyan square or whatever color you set it to. In this case, we want to make sure to keep the tint percentage correct for each one of this. Like in, in this case, this photo, you have the sky up above the bridge here is very light. And then these areas here are very dark. You do not want to convert the whole thing over to one solid color you need to keep all of these uh, t tints uh, correct so that when it outputs it actually looks like a photo. So if I click edit here this kind of shows you exactly what we're doing here. So the source color model is going to be a gray percentage and the source color value I've set to a, a variable which is the source tint percentage. In this case it's going to be defaulting to zero. Tolerance is going to be set to 100% because basically we want to, uh, if you see here, this checkbox is clicked, include inter in intermediate color values. Basically what we want to do is we want to capture everything from zero all the way to 100% and convert it. So like I said here, you have very light colors up here at the top in the sky and very dark colors here at the bottom where the, uh, uh, the hill here is or the landscape is. So we want to be able to make sure that all of that is captured in one shot. So <clears throat> leave that checked. Your destination color model is going to be CMYK. These are set to variables, which basically are going to ask for what the cyan, magenta, yellow, and black percentage is of your, your spot color that you're creating, which you have to have this checked, obviously. And then this is going to create a... Uh, a spot color name here which we can change in this case I have the beginning part of it set to Pantone and then we want to apply this only to grayscale images so in this case 
um, you just click this you go down to grayscale images and that's why we had to convert everything over to grayscale in the previous step so I'll hit fix and then we need this is where we need to set our uh, CMYK values and set a Pantone color um, so today I've kind of been working with this uh, 186 this is going to be for later in the video this is the, the 186 is the the red color for the target logo so the CMYK output is 0967720 or rough roughly thereabouts so 967720 the source tint is 0% the tolerance is going to be 100 and then this is going to be 186C so if I hit OK and I'm going to name this now Pantone 186C and hit save and now it's going to convert all 10 of these images over to a CMYK color but the the uh, actual output is going to be a spot PMS color so if I go to my output preview here you can see it's created this Pantone 186C and if I uncheck the separations box you can see that now all 10 of these pages have disappeared and if I click this back on these will now output as a solid PMS color and obviously the tint percentage is going to stay the same so as I kind of go around here and you look at these percentages changing obviously down here you're it's a very dark color you know almost 100 percent and then up near the sky it's very little only four or five percent and that's um, so that it's going to output and look more like an image than a solid block of color so obviously that first photo is probably not very a very good photo to use because it's very dark but some of these other ones would output very beautifully so anyway that's how to do it for a photo let me go back in here so now here i have taken this um uh, target logo i've created a pdf from uh from it but it's still basically a picture file it's just a cmyk picture and what I did here was, if I open up this booklet, is I basically set this up in uh, Adobe InDesign to create a little eight-page booklet. I just filled it with some placeholder text, and then I put the Target logo at the top. So let's say in you know the real world, if if you have a customer and they want to place their logo in the corner, they provide you with a, a JPEG instead of a nice vector file or something like that. But they say, hey, you know, our color, our, our specific uh, PMS color is 186 red. Well, you're going to have to set that when you go to output your your um, printing plates if you're printing it on an offset press. Or if you take this over to a digital machine, it allows you to kind of tweak these colors if uh, the customer is unhappy with the way that your default output, um, you know, comes out for this with this red color maybe they're like oh it's you know it's too dark too light or whatever and you want to make those changes you can do that easily on the press side but you have to have this set up as a pms color now, obviously right now it's just cmyk so if i hover over you can see these are cmyk values it's, there's no um, specific pms so if i go back into print production i've created a pre-flight for this one and this is going to be called map cmyk images to spot color 100 percent tint so in this case this one here that we did in the first part of the video is going to keep that tint percentage whatever we want in the photo to make it still look like a photo in this case we want it to be solid so that it's going to make uh, make it look like a uh, a real logo so if i click edit basically it's the same setup as the first part the only thing that's going to change here is the color model is going to change from the gray to CMYK and then the um, apply to is going to change from the grayscale images to all images and the one and uh, one thing here we're going to have to change is the tolerance level here and I'll show you why in just a second so if I click fix and actually I want to make sure sometimes it's hard to remember what these colors are outputting as so if I kind of move these right on top here, and now if I move my mouse, so like if I'm over here and I come, now all my values are zero. 
but if I hover right here and then move over into this window, you can see it kind of keeps those values uh, uh, still in there so I don't have to write it down. I'm going to click fix. And so my destination profile is going to be the same as the, uh, the first part of the video. So this is the 967720. So I go 0, 96, 7720. This is Pantone 186C. And my source colors are these ones here, 13, 100, 104. So I click OK. I'm going to say this is PMS 186C. Hit save. And then it did it for right here. It says one object, and that's just because the same object repeats on all the different pages. So it's created a new uh, separation plate. If I uncheck it, you can see the logo disappears. And if I scroll through, you can see the logo is gone for all the other corresponding pages. And if I click it, the logo is back on here. And now, so now this whole thing is going to print 100% solid. So even if my CMYK values weren't solid in, to begin with, now that everything is going to be 100% um, Pantone 186. So now when I go to, to plate this and we run it on an offset press, it'll be nice and solid 100% for that plate. So the last thing I'm going to show you here is a flyer. So I have a flyer here that I've set up basically in two colors already, right? So if I go into my output preview, I have my 186 cyan here, or I mean not 186 red here. If I uncheck that, you can see all of these elements here disappear. And if I uncheck the black, all of the text disappears. However, the photos themselves are still set up as CMYK. So actually, let me just show you that. So if I scroll through here, hover over the image, you can see all these different um, CYM, CMYK values change for these uh, photos. But let's say for whatever reason, again, we're going to print this on an offset press. So we need to swap these over and we're going to use Pantone 186 as our base color. So we're going to pop into our pre-flight again. And now basically what we need to do is we need to use this map grayscale images to spot color, right? So first we need to convert this into uh, grayscale. But we want to make sure to do this for just the images and not the entire flyer because the other parts of it have already been set up properly. So if I go to... Um, Let's see, what did I call it? Uh, color. No, convert. I'm sorry. There we go. So I created a new profile here called Convert Images to Grayscale. If I click and edit here, you can see exactly what's going on. So this is the convert color fix up. And so again, we're going to do a dot gain 15%. We're going to. Um, uh, leave this unchecked, the use destination profile from output intent uh, if present. And then we're going to leave these three checked. Dot gains 15%. Um, assume profiles, this part of it doesn't really matter too much. Conversion settings is, this is going to be the important part. So in this case, we want to apply this to all images, right? If we did it to all objects, it would convert the entire flyer itself. Obviously, if you converted it to uh, text or line art, any of these other things, it would convert just those different parts of the uh, flyer itself. But in this case, I want to apply this to all images, and it'll it'll just click on these four uh, different images that are in the flyer here. So that's the setup. If I hit fix, uh, I'm gonna go call this, uh, let's just call this grayscale images. I'm going to hit save. And then now it's converted these four photos over to grayscale. So again, if I click on my process black, now everything disappears as far as the images and text go. But obviously there's one more step to it. We need to convert these over to an actual PMS color. 
and we need to do this for just the images. So if I go back to pre-flight and I go to map again, I'm going to map the grayscale images to spot color, keeping the tint percentage so again they actually look like photos. So if I hit fix, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to enter in these same colors. So 96, 77, 20. 96, 77, 20. Source tint percentage, zero. And the tolerance. C is what we're going to name this and I'm going to click OK and instead of saying grayscale images we're going to say uh, Pantone 186C Hit save and now if I go back into my output preview you can see everything should be in two colors Pantone 186 for the logo, the images, and these little uh, bars here, and then process black for the actual photo, and then this little like over, you know, overprint area or whatever it is in the original design here. So now everything is set to two colors. I don't know what this one was. I I missed that, but you under you kind of get the uh, gist of it. If I uh, I missed this in the in the beginning part when I converted the rest of the elements over to two color, but anyway, that's how you would convert the actual images over. So now this is ready to send off to a plate maker, and you'll end up with two plates: one for the text, and then one for the logo and the actual images. It's going to be a two color job, and that's what it's going to look like when it's printed. So I hope this is helpful for uh, some folks. There's a couple different ways there to attack, you know, uh, things between between images, between um, an actual logo, and then how to apply it kind of to uh, where you have both elements together. And so you want to kind of keep things separate from each, uh, one another. You don't want to convert the whole thing over to grayscale and then have to um, do some advanced editing. Again, this, uh, uh, something like this, you can obviously do this in Photoshop, uh, create a monotone uh, image, um, but this would apply whether we have a one-page document or a ten-page document like we did in the first part of the video with the um, all the different like screensavers basically that we converted over. So again, this is a way, uh, a great way to work using PreFlight if you have a multi-page PDF file and you need to apply this to you know, five, six, ten, a hundred, a thousand pages. Anyway, that's it for the video. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. As always, I'm happy to help. Uh, if you have any ideas for future videos, please let me know. Or if you want to see anything more that I missed, or I want to want to, uh, you want me to cover more in depth, I'm happy to help. As always, please like, share, and subscribe. I appreciate all the viewership. As always, every single video, uh, it's just again, it's kind of amazing that I've gotten to a thousand subscribers now and the number keeps going up so I appreciate it again if you have any questions comment down below and I'll catch you on the next one take care